Hello again and welcome to session two of the Stingray Templates Overview. In this session we're going to go over the character template. This is a great place to start if you want to set up a first person shooter type or third person shooter type character. So we'll go ahead and open this up in the editor. Again as before when we first open the editor it opens with a blank level. So if we'd like to see the level that we've created for the character template we're going to go to File, Open Level, and open the character level. As you can see in this level, as we zoom out, this is just a simple white box. We have some things the character can run around. We have a dominant directional light in the top. We have some of these little player starts that we've created. And there's some simple targets with some triggers on them that will play a sound if you hit them with your projectile. There's just a few obstacles as well that can allow you to run around. So if we wanted to run this level and we hit play, we would spawn as our character and we can walk around and have proper animations, we can crouch, we can fire a physics based projectile that would then bounce around the world. We can jump. So we have some basic simple camera controls, basic character controls that you can see as we move around. If we hit escape, we'll back out of this level. Now if we run the project, which is the entire project, we'll get our main menu like we did previously in the basic project. You can hit start and you will enter into this. Now if we hit F2 when we're in here, we can swap to a camera view where we can fly around again, very similar to the basic template. If we hit F2 again, we'll spawn and since we have multiple spawn points, we'll just randomly choose those where we spawn as we swap back and forth. And you can just set that up through your level editor. If we hit escape, we'll go back to the main menu and of course quit will bring us out. So let's get started on how we set some of this up. The first place we want to look at is we go into our content browser and we look for where our character is. So if we go into the models character folder, we still have our simple character from the basic in here even though he's not used. We have our generic rigged 3P character guy here. This is the mesh. And then we have some flow that goes along with him that's in his editor. And then we have the skeleton, as you can see in our asset preview, that is the skeleton of the character. This also has an aim constraint node in the front, as you can see here, for where we're going to target our aim. And then if we go into the animation folder under 3P character, you can see we have an anim controller here, and all of the animations that this guy is going to play and blend properly live in this folder. So first let's check out that anim controller. So if we open up this guy in his anim controller, we get a little separate window and you can dock this if you want or you can just leave it floating over the surface. And we have a preview and we have this little locomotion thing here in the middle. So if we select the locomotion, you can see over here on the left we have a bunch of different layers and we'll have a different video session that goes more into this. This is more of an overview at this point. But we have layers and inside the layers we have character states and inside locomotion as we open this up, we have a little bit of a visual tree here that you can see and you can draw lines from things and drag and connect and set the, the properties up for your animation blending the way that you would like them to be. All of these different animations have different events underneath them, crouch, walk, jump, sprint, and how they transition between. This is all carried over here in the events panel. Each event has their own individual settings. Then we have some variables for move direction, move speed, and posture, and these variables reach back into our script, which I'll show you in a minute. We also have a constraint target for where we're going to aim our weapon, and then we have some aim constraints here as well. And you guys can play around with these and, and see what the different settings do, and again, we'll have a different uh, video that covers more of the animation tree and how all this is set up. I just wanted to let you know where this lives. This is the anim controller for your character. So if we go back to our character, and we open this guy up in the unit editor, this is similar to any other unit in the engine. He'll have his skeleton here as you can see, he has a main mesh and he has all these different nodes of course that correspond to his skeleton and all of his animations. He has his main mesh, we have an actor here on him that will trigger different triggers in the level, and we have a mover similar to the character in the basic template that allows him to move and, and how we apply physics to him. 
So if we go into our text editor, under script and Lua, and again, you can open this in the script editor in the, uh, in the engine if you like, either way. We have this uh, player.lua, and we also have inside the player.lua where we spawn the player and how we set up all the animations. So initially when we spawn, we spawn in as the player and we can hit F2 to swap to a default camera. All of this stuff is set up in this player.lua. Again, we don't want to get into too much of the scripting side. I just want to show you where some of these things live, some of the basic variables as far as move speed and the landing distance and your camera speed and all of this stuff. These are global variables here at the top of the script. And as we go through, we have different functions as far as playing audio, which I'll show you a little bit as well here in a second, um, how we're playing an ambient sound or a spawn sound or how do we play the fire sound. We have a few basic functions that we call. Uh, player init, of course, is going to set up all the different things that we'd like to on init, which is the player camera, um, the moving, the free three modes, and spawning your projectiles and the, your player weapon, etc. We have spawn free cam, which is spawning your free camera and all the settings that go along with that as well. Spawning the character, what his pose is going to be, where he's going to spawn. We spawn the player weapon. And we have functions in here like enable lock mode, which allows you to use the F2 button, of course, to switch back and forth. Here we're setting the camera off uh, offset of, to the eye socket from the uh, character itself and the skeleton. That's where we attach the camera. And as you go through this file, there's a bunch of different functions and a bunch of different settings. It seems a little bit complex at first if you're not familiar with scripting, but it's all fairly straightforward and they're very simple functions. It's pretty clear uh, to follow as you walk through the steps and see how everything is attached and how it, how it begins and how it ends. We're spawning projectiles in here, we're attaching cameras, we're attaching weapons, uh, we're attaching movements in all the controllers here as well. We're checking if we're sprinting, if we're not sprinting, if we're crouching, if we're not crouching. We're computing the move direction and how we blend between all the different uh, animations. And that all lives here in the player.lua. We also shut down the player and clean up all the instances here when we exit and shut down through the level. There's a few other things in here as far as the player HUD goes. This reaches back to the different HUD settings that we have while you're playing as the character. There's the project.lua that's going to load all the things relevant to your project and handle the shutdowns. There's the main menu.lua which is going to handle all the main menu functions that we showed you earlier in the Scaleform Studio for that simple main menu that we have. And then we have flow callbacks where you can put in custom flow callbacks for any flow nodes that you create. So if we go into level flow, this is the first kind of introduction to what is our scripting language, our visual scripting language. So in here we have a level loaded, which lets us know that the level is loaded. We have a few update ticks in here for level update and get last delta time. And then we have this level shutdown. This is helping us to properly clean up the level and how we load the level through flow. There's also a flow example in here, very simple, of how we target these triggers for when you hit a bullseye. So if you look in the level, we have these targets and we have triggers around the targets. So if we go into the level flow, these correspond to each trigger on each bullseye. So if target four, this unit, which is attached to this WY's trigger event, which will play my audio, if it's triggered on the trigger zero, which is the trigger associated to this unit, then it's going to go in here and it's going to say, hey, if I'm on this unit, play this sound effect, which is sound effects ball hit target. So it'll play that anytime that trigger is triggered. And we do this for all the targets in the level. It's just a real simple way to show you how some of the audio events can be hooked up through triggers in flow. So if we go to the WY's audio, which is also included in Stingray. This will open up our project. As you can see here, this is, again, we'll have another video that goes over more in depth of some of this audio stuff, but I just wanted to show you how we were triggering that event. So if under the audio tabs here, if you look under events, we have this SFX ball hit target. So this was the event that we called through flow that would play that audio. This is associated to the audio in Wise that would play the sound that we would want to hear. This is the same for all of these sounds. Every sound in WISE has to have a triggerable event. So we set up all the names that correspond to the sounds and then we add it to a sound bank, which we then load through the project. 
All of the audio for the project is stored in the sound bank. We access the sound bank through script files or through flow. So back to the project, we've covered where the character lives, we've covered where the skeleton is, and how to access the, uh, the character. So I want to show you a little bit of the flow for the units. So to do that, I want to go into my props, and I want to open this projectile. So in this projectile, he has a unit flow section. So in here, our, our visual scripting language can either be associated with a level or a unit itself. So in this unit, I've added a physics collision, and I've basically said my actor here is this projectile actor. That's my physics actor. If I start a touch, then I want to play this sound. And the sound that I'm playing reaching back into the sound bank is the bounce sound. So now every time that this projectile unit is in my level, it will play a bounce sound. So let's see if we can hear that. So we jump in the level. So as you can see and hear, when the ball hits the ground, it played the audio properly. So that's a basic run through of our character level. Kind of give you an overview of where everything lives in the project, where everything's kind of hooked up and how everything can be accessed. In the next session, we'll cover the vehicle, how to set up the vehicle physics and where all the vehicle objects live inside the vehicle project.